Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. All right, it is time for a very important part of this class. We are going to do the Fall 2021 Kaggle competition. It is now open. You can find the link in the description. And this is open to the internet. It's through Kaggle in class. So you don't necessarily have to be a student in my class at Washington University to participate in this. So I, I invite any of you watching this to join. Now, the students at Washington University, you are doing this as part of your grade for the semester. So you need to submit a zip of your final solution on the WashU Canvas system. I'll talk more about that when we meet in class today, actually. So let's go ahead and jump to the Kaggle. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce this. You can see there are a variety of different past semesters that have Kaggle assignments. And I encourage you to take a look at some of these if you want sample code. This is a image recognition Kaggle. There's a previous Kaggle that I did where you counted paper clips. That's probably the closest one because that is a image regression. We're doing an image regression here. Let's look at it and I'll tell you exactly what we're doing. So this is the Kaggle page. If we look at the leaderboard, nobody has submitted anything yet. You do see my sample benchmark that's getting an RMSE of 1900 approximately. That is just taking an average of all of the target variables in the train data set and putting it into the test data set. But let's go ahead over here and look at what this is asking you to do. I created a Python application in Blender that generates random cities. And you can see one of them here, just in, in the title segment. They're fully 3D cities, as you can see here. I can rotate them around. I can try different altitudes. I can perform a variety of operations on these. And I generated a bunch of images of these cities from all different angles. Different city in each image because they're randomly generated. Some are similar to each other. You can see there's also roads in there. You can barely see the roads but the buildings are connected to roads, so that might give your model some clue. The images that I actually give you are, let's see, I believe they're either, I believe they're 512 by 512 is the, is the standard resolution. You'll probably want to shrink that down a bit to go into the neural network, but this is showing you them at the raw resolution. You'll get them at a variety of different angles. You can see this city here, it's also darker because you also have to deal with different times of the day. The sun can change its angle depending on when each image was captured. So that adds additional complexity to you. And the zoom will change. You'll be at different distances, different altitudes, different angles. You can see in this one, part of your city is, is cropped off, unfortunately. So you have to approximate. There's no way that you're gonna get zero RMSEs on this one. So it's, it's not 100% perfect data. So some of this is seeing how well your model can approximate. If you wanted to engineer off a feature that I don't think would be too hard to do, you could basically, you could probably look directly at the image and engineer off a feature that says, the whole city is not in view. Like in this one, the whole city is in view. If you somehow did, I don't know, like a like a box around it, you could you could engineer off that feature. Just a random idea. It'll be dark in some of these. Here, this was near sunset, I suppose. And you'll also have shadows. The buildings are casting shadows on each other. The buildings are also obscuring each other. So that's a challenge as well. There's definitely approximation that your neural network will be doing. And you, you may want to adjust brightness on these, get them all at the same brightness level, because then the colors of the buildings might be, might be useful. Now, does the color of the building tell you anything about its height? I don't know, you'll, you'll have to see. Some cities are very small, like that city. It's got some roads going on over there, so there's probably very, very small buildings you're not seeing, but it, it only has two towers. So this would be a very, very small city because Oh, I forgot to mention, the goal, what you're trying to do is you're predicting how much square feet are in each of these cities. So a bigger city like that would have a lot of square feet. 
And remember, we're talking square feet, not volume. So millions of square feet. So if you wanted to calculate the square footage of this tower, you would determine how many floors are in there. And I will tell you one ordinance of this nation that all these cities are from is that the floors must be of a consistent height. So the ceiling has to be consistent. I'm not going to tell you what that what that measurement is, of course, but that is it is consistent. So if you figured out the number of floors in this building, and then most they're all rectangular, and you multiply the height times the width times the floors, that's how many square feet that building has. And then you just sum up the rest of those. Some cities are larger, such as that one. So that's the overall goal of what you're you're trying to accomplish. How many square feet? are in a given city. And you'll be evaluated on root mean square error. If we look at the data for this, you can see there's all sorts of images. Now, I did make it so the ground is reflective, just for additional fun. So you'll see a reflection, almost like water. You see the, the sun there. And some of these are very dark, some of them are not very dark. You also get the training CSV file. This gives you the ID of each row, that's also the image itself, so one point JPG is the ID. And I compress these all with JPEG at 25 quality, just so that the files are not monstrous. This is already like 200 some odd megabytes. You can download it or you can process it inside of Kaggle. And we'll talk about processing it inside of Kaggle in just, just a moment. So you can see the different cities. Some of them are very small. You can certainly download all of those or you can process it right in Kaggle. I do recommend processing it right in Kaggle. Is when you process it, and then your score will go right to the leaderboard, and you can submit as many times as you want. You're giving a separate test.csv, and that's, that tells you the IDs of the images that you need to calculate an RMSC for. And then you submit that. So if you look at a sample submission, it looks just like the training data. But if we look at the sample, you can see the ones that I'm testing you are on 24,000 on. Some of those are for the private leaderboard, some are for the public leaderboard. So whatever your score on all of those are, that gives you your public leaderboard score. And then at the very, very end, so, uh, some of these, some percentage of this evaluation set is used to give you your final private leaderboard score, and that determines who the winners are. And if you look at the test set, there's just no value filled in here. So you need to fill in the square feet. And by the way, it is in millions of square feet since it's, it's city level. So remember, your RMSEs are going to be high for this because it's how many, how many feet off, how many square feet off you are. So that's the, that's the basic idea of that. Let me show you the sample code that I've provided for you. If you go into the code, you can see that I gave you two notebooks. You can share your own notebooks for this if you want to, but just be aware if you share a notebook, all your fellow students have access to your code. So just decide if you want to do that. At the end, I'm going to encourage the winning teams to share their code. Because if you go look at some of the previous Kaggle competitions that I have here, you'll see the code for that. And you can use from, this, from the solutions of previous students. Like I said, of all the Kaggles that I've run, the paper clips one is probably the closest to this. And I also have a video where the winning student discusses their solution. So I'll also put a link to that in the description. Let's look at the basic one. This is a basic, basic solution for this. What this does is we get the path. So Kaggle is going to automatically download this for you. And we're going to get train CSV and test CSV. That's your training set. And then the evaluation set that you're going to send into me. I detect if there's a GPU or not. I highly suggest running this with GPU. Kaggle gives you about 40 hours, 30 hours, something like that of GPU time. So if you're working on a team, you can use additional team members to get more precious, precious GPU time. It's also important to create a new column called file name. File name is basically the ID with a JPEG put on the end. So that's going to let us be able to open the files for those. And I'm going to divide it into 90% for the training set and 10% for 
an intermediate internal validation that we do just for early stopping. And there I print out the number in each. We go through and we're gonna use a generator. So generators are really neat. I'm saying go ahead and do horizontal flips because what this does is it's going to let us take each of these images and flip them so that we get twice the amount of training data. There's other transformers you can do as well. However, be careful with that because think about a city and is a flip a valid thing to do on a city? Horizontal, sure. Vertical, um, not so much. Even cities on the other side of the planet are not upside down because, well, you know, first grade geography and all. We are on a sphere. Sorry, flat earthers. So here is, here we are using the, the generators. We do have to use a different generator for the validation set. The validation set, we don't want to augment. Don't flip images for the validation set. We want to validate on real data, not fake data. We're trying to create additional fake data on the training side to get a better score on the validation side. Also batch sizes. On validation, batch size has nothing to do with performance. You want that as high as possible. If you're using a GPU, set it as high as you can so that the GPU memory doesn't explode. However, for training, the batch size is one of your, one of your training hyperparameters that will determine the goodness of fit. So experiment with that. Usually lower batch sizes are better. We also use classification mode as raw. This is not classification, this is regression. We just want those numbers coming straight in. The square footage. Okay, now we're getting ready to actually set it up and train it. This line is absolutely critical. If you don't do this, you're gonna have much, much frustration. You've got to set that validation step size so that it aligns to the batch size. Otherwise, you're not going to get validations done. And it, it can be really frustrating to figure out. It, it annoyed me when I first, first used this. I set up a very basic neural network. Just convolution layers, flatten it, and then a little bit of dropout. You'll need something more complicated than this. My next example, I show you how to use a ResNet. And that gets much better, much, much better results. We're using mean square error to optimize because this is regression. Atom optimizer is good enough. We're going to train for 50 epochs, although early stopping will stop us before we get there. Steps per epoch is 250. Setting that value is not going to really affect your training outcome. That's just, think of an epoch as every time you hit an epoch, you are going to validate and see where you're at on the training set or on the validation set. Step size is how many steps to go through before you update the weights. That will affect your overall training, but that tends to be your mini. And then it goes through, you get some of these warnings, do not worry about the NUMA, and it goes through and it trains. You'll watch this go for a little while, and you can see that the validation loss somewhat falls. Not as good as you might like, but this is a very basic, very, very basic example. Then we're gonna build the submission. You need, this is important, because this is how you submit it actually to Kaggle. We have to do a generator, very similar to the previous generators, but some important differences. The X column is the file name. There is no class mode, because there's no target. We're generating the target, Y hat, basically. So it is not going to need to do any encoding on that output target. That's what we're generating. So just X, no Y. The batch size, again, set that to whatever will fit in your GPU. I set it to one here. That might give a little bit of bad performance, but again, this part executes very quickly. The X column is the file name. And then you, you absolutely want to reset this at the beginning each time so that it always starts at the beginning because you, you're not just randomly sampling things. You have a definite order. That's why I set shuffle to false as well. If you don't have those set, it's gonna randomize it and you're not, your, your Y hats, your predictions are not going to align to your IDs and you'll get a horrible, horrible score. Then we build the submission data frame. We're gonna put the IDs in and we're going to put the square feet of the prediction. I show just the first, first lines of the submit. And there you go, that's the basic example. Let me show you also the, the more complicated example that gets a much, much better score. This is transfer learning. 
This is also very unrefined. I took about an hour and just threw together two, two very simple examples. This is all the same. This is all the same. Same, same, same. Same as well. Now we're gonna do 150 by 150. I didn't mention that on the previous one. That's what we're shrinking it to. You might get better. You will likely get better results with a bigger image. Something to play with. We set up the generators. It's all the same. This is quite different. So here I'm using the ResNet 50. That's a small variant of ResNet that has 50 layers, I believe is what that means. I'm setting the input shape to my own height and width. And then I am going to also create an output so that it classify, uh, so that it is regression. Because normally ResNet is classification and normally ResNet has a very specific image input size. I wanted to make that input size different. Now, since I'm changing the input size, I cannot use the pre-trained weights and use true transfer learning like ResNet has. Rather, I'm going to discard the weights of the ResNet network and I'm just using its structure so that I can train my neural network on a ResNet. And this basically pulls in my ResNet. I'm not including the top because I'm defining my own input, not loading the weights, and specifying my own input size up there. Then I go down here and I am going to do the global average pooling. That just flattens everything so that it can now go into these two 1024 dense layers. So that's doing the feature extraction from all those previous layers of the ResNet. The rest of this code is exactly the same. We are training the model just like before, but now the model is this transferred ResNet. And there's all kinds of neural networks inside of Keras that you can use. ResNet is just, we talked about ResNet earlier in class, so I thought that was a good one to use, but there's Exception, there's um, ImageNet, there's a, there's a bunch of them. Notice the validation loss. It's so much better. It's dropping, 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 uh, not so much dropping, not so good, early stopping hits. And the, the looks like the final validation loss, the lowest one might have been still above a million. But remember, that's the square root of 1.7 million because it's RMSC. So to look at how close that one really was, if it's 1.7 million, some of you can probably do this in your head, I cannot. So it's about 1,300 square feet. So not bad. I'll be very curious to see how low people take those RMSCs. I'm gonna be shocked if you like break 100, or heaven forbid if you break 10. I don't even know how that would be possible. Sometimes I make these too easy and we get several people with, two, with zero RMSCs. I intentionally tried to make this one a bit, a bit harder. But it's self-leveling, so whatever that, that goodness line is, you guys will determine that, and gals, as you take a look at this. And then the same submission holds true as well. All right, that's the Kaggle competition. Good luck to everybody. And if you have questions, feel free to post them in the comments of the actual Kaggle, whether you're in Warshoe or not. I will be monitoring those and I will respond. Students may respond, you may respond to each other. That's totally, totally up to you. If you are a Warshoe student, You've already got your teams defined and they can only have five students in there, but if you do want to include somebody from outside the class, that's permissible as well. All right, thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in all things artificial intelligence or more on this class, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching this video, and please give me a like if this was helpful to you.